Hello everyone, and welcome to the Movie Fanatics. My name is Brannock. What makes a mystery? A sense of confusion, a lack of information, ambiguity, lingering questions all lead to a story being mysterious. The Haunting of Hill House and The Thing are two pieces of horror media that are similar in very few ways. Hill House director Mike Flanagan was noticeably influenced by other horror movies when making the show, but The Thing has very few parallels to Hill House. However, these two pieces of media do contain elements of mystery, but in different ways. The Haunting of Hill House drops us right into the middle of a situation we don't fully understand. The show tells its story out of order, containing scenes from Hill House when the characters were kids, and scenes where the characters are adults. The first five episodes take place over roughly the same stretch of time in the modern era, and as the show progresses, gaps in the mystery are filled in. Scenes that were confusing begin to make more sense, and some scenes are recontextualized completely. The scene where Luke breaks into and robs Steve's apartment at first paints Luke in a purely negative light, especially since we've been told what a bum he is. But later, we see the same moment from his perspective and can somewhat empathize with the reason he takes these actions. We see Nell dancing by herself in the house in episode 1, and later see her perspective in episode 5, where the house shows her visions that appeal to her innermost desires. She sees herself dancing with her dead husband before the house makes her hang herself. The moment it's revealed that the bent neck lady that has haunted Nell all her life was really Nell all along was the one moment that made me go from liking the series to loving it. The idea that she has been tormented with a vision of her own death is deeply disturbing. All throughout the show we're teased with the truth about what happened on the dramatic final night at Hill House. This mystery drives the whole series, especially the second half. As a viewer, you begin to place the puzzle pieces into their proper places until you can see the full image, some of the last few pieces being placed in the very last episode. The mystery is made satisfying to unravel through the amount of speculation the viewer does as the show goes on, and what makes the riddle so effective is the way the show provides answers. In The Thing, there are no answers. The Thing handles mystery in a different way. The film relies on ambiguity, what the viewer doesn't see, what the viewer doesn't know, to the point where it's perplexing. There's this sense of dread present throughout this movie because of how much is left to interpretation. You have the part where the dog walks into the room and presumably thingifies the person inside. But who is this person? We only see a shadow. Similarly, we very rarely see when people are turned into things. We only see the aftermath. It's like we, the audience, are piecing everything together alongside the characters. There's rarely a moment where we know more than they do. In The Thing, most of the suspense comes from this lack of knowing who is really human or not. There's that theme of a divide in the characters present here. The characters go from being friends working together to this every man for himself scenario where no one trusts each other. Everyone is suspicious of everyone else and it leads to a perfect amount of tension. In Hill House, the characters have fallen out. This family is broken because of the problems each of the five Crane siblings face. Steve exploited his sibling's trauma from the house for money by writing his novel. Shirley is a control freak who holds others to a higher standard than she holds herself to. Theo builds up walls and doesn't want to be a part of their lives. Luke is an addict who constantly wastes his sibling's attempts at help. Nell is depressed and just wants the family to act like a family again. This division is what keeps the characters interesting, and really the ghosts just symbolize the trauma that has followed them since they left the house. That's the true haunting. Eventually, though, that trauma is defeated when the siblings reunite inside the walls of the house to save Luke, and the show ends with the characters healing the broken bonds between them. The bonds are never healed in the thing. The mistrust every character holds tears them apart and leads to almost all of them dying, even non-infected humans. At the very end, we're left with two characters with zero trust in each other. Horror endings can be good or bad. You have the bad, campy slasher endings where the killer is revealed to still be alive and then there's one last cheap jump scare. But then there are the truly chilling endings that leave you with an eerie feeling as the credits roll. My favorite, of course, are the ambiguous ones. Endings that leave you with burning questions that go unanswered. A figure following far off in the distance. A black and white photograph with confusing implications smiling at us on the wall. And two characters, both appearing to be humans, agreeing to just see what happens. There's so much to theorize about and so much to analyze with this ending. Both characters could be the thing, one of them could be the thing, neither of them could be the thing. But what makes this ending unsettling is that we don't know. We're left with two characters who agree to sit in paranoia. Both these projects have incredible visual presentation. Mike Flanagan uses the camera in profoundly eerie ways, creating lasting images like the floating bent neck lady slowly coming into view. Episode 6 was my favorite because it was shot in five long takes, one of them lasting almost 20 minutes long. The Thing has incredible use of practical effects that have aged phenomenally. The effects of The Thing itself are terrifying in how uncanny they are. But more so than visual marvels, both The Haunting of Hill House and The Thing are fantastic mystery stories that leave you satisfied, or in the case of The Thing, satisfyingly unsatisfied. 
These two occupy very different spots in the horror genre, but are very interesting to compare because of how they go about telling a mystery story. One is engaging because of lingering questions, the other for rewarding answers. Both are incredibly rewatchable and leave you with a lasting impression after the credits roll. A house left to rot, two men left to freeze. This is Brandon from the Movie Fanatics, signing off.